So you want to install an aftermarket amplifier and you're gonna use either a line output converter or the speaker level inputs into that aftermarket amplifier to send it signal. Something pretty cool we can do is we can use the turn on mode selection for the device to make it so our factory system can tell it when to turn on. The advantage here being that we don't have to find a switched 12 volt lead for the remote turn on connection. Instead, all we need is that 12 volt constant and the ground. Simple right? Well, it gets a little bit more complicated than that because depending on your vehicle, this feature may or may not work at all and it might not work how you're expecting it to. So we need to know how to test our factory system in order to make the correct choice for our turn on mode. Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get into this. A quick shout out to our show sponsor, Audio Control. Not only does Audio Control make car audio integration gear and amplifiers, they also make speakers and subwoofers. One of their newest lines of subwoofers are these. These are the Space Series subwoofers and these are a shallow mount design. Currently available as a 10 inch size or a 12 inch, the 10 inch has a three and a half inch mounting depth and the 12 inch has a four inch mounting depth. And look, no pole vent on the backside, which means we can have a board right tight up against this subwoofer if need be. Not only that, these can be used in a very compact enclosure as well. If you guys want to learn more, check out the links down in the video description. First off, let's understand that this mode is called a few different things depending on the manufacturer. So on this LC2i Pro from Audio Control, the mode that we're referring to is called the trigger mode. On other amplifiers, it might be called the turn on mode. And again, on this Audio Control amplifier here, they call it GTO, which stands for great turn on. So GTO signal sense there, that is the turn on mode selection on this amp. Before we even got started, I just wanted to point this out because some amplifiers essentially have a line output converter built in as they allow for that high level speaker level input. So even though I'm gonna be using a line output converter to explain these modes, these modes also apply when they are on an amplifier. The first mode, which is the easiest and most straightforward to understand is the remote in turn on mode. With our amplifier or line output converter, we're always going to have a 12 volt constant lead and a ground connection. With the remote in turn on mode, this remote in connection right here is monitored and the device needs to see a positive 12 volt turn on in order for this to turn on. We can simulate this just by touching it here to the 12 volt positive and you can see our device turns on. To find a good connection for this in the vehicle, you can use a multimeter and you're basically looking for a wire that is going to provide a 12 volt signal, a positive 12 volt signal, whenever the audio system in the vehicle is turned on. Well, come on, Mark, so far all of this information is very obvious and straightforward, and I'd agree with you, but the problem is in today's latest vehicles, this is quite an old setup here, but in today's newer head units, there are times that a switched 12 volt connection is simply not available. So we might need to pick a different mode. In this case, the next mode we're gonna talk about is GTO mode. Again, this is audio controls version of DC offset turn on. Now in this mode, you can see that even though we do not have a remote in connection made, the device is still on. That's because in this mode, the device is monitoring the speaker level inputs to look for a DC offset to turn on the device. So right now you can see our device is off and that's because our factory system is off. Once our factory system is turned on, the device also turns on. Now you have to be careful with this mode though and I see this all the time. A lot of people just assume that this mode is always going to work but it doesn't work in every application. So obviously it's a good idea to be able to test for if it's going to work and we're going to do that using a multimeter. Just a brief explanation on my integration test center here. This is obviously an old factory head unit out of a vehicle and this is a factory premium amplifier out of that same vehicle. So what I have going on here is all of these connections down here. These are just the outputs from that factory stock amplifier and then this is just 12 volt constant and ground. So imagine if you will, these are just the speaker wires at each speaker. So what we're gonna do is take our multimeter and we're gonna measure DC voltage and we're going to put our negative connection on a ground and then we're going to put our positive connection on a positive speaker wire connection. On our head unit, we're going to completely lower the volume and then we're going to look at our voltage measurement. 
you should see a voltage measurement. Typically, it's going to be around six volts. Some devices are designed to detect a even lower voltage, but if you see this voltage in this measurement scenario here, this means that DC offset will likely work. So if you're wanting to use DC offset, you might think you're in the clear now, but there's a few more things that you're definitely going to want to check. I'd recommend that you completely close up the vehicle, lock all the doors, and you're going to want to see when this measurement will actually drop off and go down to zero volts. The reason for that is with many factory systems, even if you turn off the head unit, there's still going to be that DC offset voltage, which means that your audio system is going to stay turned on. Now, if after leaving the vehicle, after a few minutes, the whole audio system goes to sleep and completely turns off, and you see that voltage drop off, you're going to be good to go. The devices are going to turn off, but it's definitely something that you want to time and measure and make sure you're comfortable with that extra amount of time that the system is going to be on. Another important note is that there are some amplifiers out there that do not allow you to turn off the DC offset setting. The reason that's important to know is imagine that we're installing an aftermarket amplifier and we're going to use the speaker level inputs to send signal into the amplifier, but let's imagine that we also were able to find a switched 12 volt lead that we want to use. If that amplifier detects the DC offset before the remote in connection comes on, the amplifier is still going to come on. So if you do have a factory system situation where the DC offset voltage stays on for far longer than you want it to, Keep in mind that that's gonna keep your amplifier on. Luckily, in the case of the audio control amplifiers here, if we did want to disable that setting, that is easy to do and obviously the same on the line output converter. Another cool feature to keep an eye out for is some line output converters will allow you to still use the remote out connection even if we're not using a remote in. So what I mean by that is right now we are in that GTO DC offset mode. So we've got the device turned on by monitoring the voltage on the input signal here. So if I take my multimeter in DC voltage, put the negative on the ground connection there and the positive on the remote out, you can see that we have 12 volts out. It's a little under 12 volts just because my benchtop battery is a little low right now. But nevertheless, we can now use that remote out connection to connect a wire to the remote in connection on downstream amplifiers and devices, telling them to turn on. Now the next common turn on mode or trigger mode that you're going to see is in audio sensing turn on mode. And when I just switch to that, you'll notice that my line output converter turned off. And the reason for that is I'm currently not actually playing any audio audio through the system. In this mode, the device isn't going to turn on until it actually detects an audio signal coming in on the speaker level inputs. So let's go ahead and I'm going to turn this up and you should see that light come on. The advantage of this audio sense mode is for those applications where a DC offset is not detected. The disadvantage though of this turn on mode is there's going to be a delay as the device waits to actually see an audio signal coming through before it's going to actively turn on your system. This could potentially mean that, you know, if you had your system completely turned down just because you weren't listening to any music, and let's say that there were chimes or other warning alerts that do play through your audio system, you might miss some of those because your device and system has fully turned off. Obviously though, on a lot of these, there's going to be a delay built in. That way you could turn down the volume temporarily and you're not encountering that issue every single time. But with that said, that also means that when you do go to get out of the vehicle, your system is going to be on for that delayed amount of time. A final thing worth noting about that audio sensing mode is it oftentimes is looking for mid-range frequencies on the device in order to turn it on. And the reason for that is with larger speakers like subwoofers and woofers, when you go to close the door of the vehicle, it can make the speaker cone actually move a little bit, which can send a false signal to the device to tell it to turn Turn on, so that's why they usually monitor more of a mid-range frequency. But that's worth noting because if you were using a line output converter for only something like a subwoofer, that would mean you would likely be tapped into the subwoofer outputs of your factory system if it has them, which means that the device might not detect those mid-range frequencies and actively turn on like it should when using the audio trigger mode. So at the end of the day, what turn on mode is best? Well, if you can, I recommend using the traditional remote turn on 
mode because you'll have the most control over this and this is going to be the most reliable connection. Now hold on, that doesn't mean that it's not good to use those other modes. I would just reserve those modes for when you can't get that 12 volt switched connection. But hey, I wanna hear from you and get your feedback. So question of the episode, what turn on mode are you using in your most current system? Let us know, and don't forget next time you need a compact subwoofer solution for a build, be sure to check out our show sponsor, Audio Control, with the Space series of subwoofers. A big thanks to them, along with Juan, Jerry, Steven, and the rest of the Patreon support team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible, and thank you for tuning in and watching.